Hey everybody, Seville here, and today we're going to be going over the Ignite Room and Try Hack Me. Uh, pretty cool box. It is a web server that uh, has a few issues from a new startup, and uh, we're just going to be the people that are going to be sniffing out those issues. It is a easy rated box, and it's pretty straightforward. It is uh, also a booter root, so that's what makes it so straightforward. We're just trying to find the user flag and the root flag, and we're done. So pretty simple task, and uh, there's not really much to go off. Uh, from there, um, I'm not going to waste too much of the time I have uh, with you today, which I also appreciate. Thank you for watching. And um, as you can see, I have already deployed the machine. It's uh, only been up for about two minutes, but I believe it should be good to go. I have also completed the box, so this will be uh, probably pretty quick, hopefully uh, not too quick, and um, hopefully you learned something. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. I'm going to go ahead and copy this IP address, and before we move forward, we can also run a in-map scan. I'm just going to do my default, which is something like nmap sc for default scripts, sv for enumerate all versions. And then, of course, we want to output that, and uh, I would output that to a nmap directory and call it something like openports.txt. I, of course, have already ran that, so we can actually just cat out that information here, and we find that there's only one port open, and that is port 80 uh, with HTTP. So we can head over to that address, and we find that it is powered by Fuel CMS, and it's nice enough to give us the version number. Uh, which is going to make for a easy Google search uh, to find some exploits for this uh, Fuel CMS. So um, if we look just below that, we get a little snippet of how to get started with our uh, newly installed CMS. And uh, this is actually going to come into uh, into uh, our hands. This is going to be pretty important uh, on our Privesk journey because there is some... Um, information here that's going to lead us to something that we definitely want. Now if we just scroll down just a tad, we find the uh, Fuel admin page and it, they are kind enough to give us the uh, credentials to that admin page. So um, after that there's not really much else that we need to look at. And we can go straight to the uh, Fuel web directory here. And of course we'll provide those credentials that, that they are so kind enough to give. And it's going to tell us that it highly recommends that we change the default admin, but uh, that's for another time. Uh, we can go through this and uh, you could try to find some stuff, uh, maybe something I missed, I don't know. Uh, nonetheless, I did find or I learned that uh, this was actually um, susceptible to cross-site scripting, which we can test out here. So we can um, do a script and then alert, do something like thanks for watching, add an exclamation point to you know, show the excitement and we'll just give it a simple description and view. We will save it. Now when we go back to blocks, it should, let's see, did I spell that? Oh, I forgot to uh, close that out, so got to do it right or else it doesn't work. And now if we go back to blocks, there we go. Thanks for watching. And I, of course, I am thankful for you watching this video. Thank you. So with that out the way, uh, we, can, um, we can move forward and try to find some exploits for Fuel CMS version 1.4. And so that's, that's a pretty easy Google search. We could just do... Uh, Fuel CMS version 1.4, and then just append exploit to it, and uh, we get a laundry list of things that we can um, go through. Um, obviously, you want to probably stay away from this. I just I thought I thought I saw another one, maybe not. Nonetheless, um, there is a Python exploit. There's also a way to just manually do it. You don't have to use a Python exploit. I'm just gonna use. Um, I would, I guess we could call it the manual way. It's basically just our uh, remote code execution. So uh, with that, um, I actually already uh, wrote that out to a text file because I did not want to type all that out uh, constantly. And plus that would just be a great waste of your time. And that's not something I'm looking to do. So I'm going to go ahead and cat that file out. Uh, it's just called exploit. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And once I do that, we can just go ahead and append it to what we have here and I'm actually going to take that extra forward slash there we're going to take that out and it looks like we just have uh, uname dash a here it looks like actually there's a, some extra stuff in there that shouldn't be there let's um let's take that out we'll also do I guess it really doesn't matter because it's going to uh, interpret it as what I'm actually putting so we don't want any spaces. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take that out. And 
And we should be good. I'm going to also... Should be enough for us. Okay, get, maybe it's not enough for us. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 um, let's see. Maybe I did do it wrong. Maybe I should just leave it the way it was. Let's let's try leaving it the way it was. And there we go. Okay. Well, my apologies. I was trying to um, outsmart the computer, yet the computer was still smarter than me. I apologize. Okay. And if we uh, view the page source here, we can see that it is actually doing remote code execution. We see that we get some information on the machine. So with uh, with that information in our mind, what we could do is set up a uh, Python simple HTTP server and get a shell over to the box. And then we can run that shell so that we can get a reverse shell as uh, a user. So what we can do now is copy a PHP shell. What I'm going to do now is go over to my uh, PHP directory. I'm pretty sure it's still here. It is. I wonder if it is set up for me though. I'm going to check that out real quick. It does not have my IP address. In. I'm just going to go ahead and make the changes here. And we want to connect on port 9001. You can get this from uh, pen test uh, reverse is it Pentest Monkey? I'm pretty sure it's Pentest Monkey. Having a little brain fart with it. So Pentest Monkey, and you can get the uh, reverse shell cheat sheet and just go to the PHP one. So cheat sheets, reverse shell cheat sheet, and you want to actually get the more robust one. Um, that will get you what I'm actually uh, modifying right now. So now that we have that, we can write that out and exit, and we can copy PHP to um, our ignite directory which is going to be in thm ignite and now we can um, now we don't want to exit that we can just go over and we should find the php shell here so now we can move that to something like just shell and we are good to go now we just need to set up a uh, python http server so we can do that by just doing um actually i'm going to have to do sudo Python 3-m HTTP server, and then we're just going to put it on port 80. And now that that is running, all we need to do is modify this right here with the command wget, and then we can do HTTP 10.8.13.197 on port 80, and then we want to get shell.php. And we'll close that out as well. So let's just make sure we have it in the same directory. It is. That way I don't have to do uh, an absolute path. And so now uh, we should be able to run this and we should see on our uh, Python server or simple HTTP server that it has received this shell.php file that we modified to uh, get us a shell on the box. And we see is actually pulling a great deal of them. So, I mean, as, as great as that is, I don't need a, that many. I just need that one. Uh, but with that done, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start a Netcat listener on 9001, which is the port we modified the uh, shell script to uh, reach out for. And what we can do is now run shell.php. And we get a, uh, a reverse shell. So now what we need to do is, or well, actually we get a shell. Um, I'm going to kind of get this going so that we can spawn a TTY shell. I'm going to do that by doing python-c, and then we want to import PTY, and then PTY.spawn. And now we can bin sh and close that out. So now we can do something like who am I? We find that we are WW data, and we can go to the CD home, see that we are the only user in the home directory, and go into that directory, list the contents there, and find that it, there's only one one uh, file there, and that is our flag.txt, so we can cap that out. And that is our user flag. So now, oh, I can't clear. So now what we need to do is work on our uh, privilege escalation. So there's a few things. When I first uh, got onto this machine and got this far, what I did was actually bring lin-ps over and you could do that the same way we got the shell script 
over for this machine. You could basically just uh, copy uh, linps over to you know a directory, or you could just do absolute path, however you feel. And then I just put it in the home directory because it's something I could uh, read, write, and execute from. And you can execute linps.sh and let it do a lot of the work for you and try to see if you can find it out. Um, otherwise, what you could do is actually just go right back to the IP address um, or, the, or the index page here. And if you read the getting started portion, uh, step two actually gives us a good bit of information. It says install the fuel CMS database by first creating the database in MySQL and then importing the um, fuel schema.sql file. After creating the database, change the database configuration found in the database.php file to include your host name, username, password, and the database to match the new database you created. Well, that uh, that is pretty interesting because they're going to need a username and password and I wouldn't set up a uh, SQL database with a low priv user. I would probably use my either, either a super user or of course the root user. So what we can do is actually go to this path here, the fuel application config database.php. So we can go over to our netcat listener and we can do, um, we can change directory to fuel. Oh, actually it's going to need to go to var www.html fuel application config. And we will find the database.php, which is right here. And that is going to be a file. So we can just cat that out. And once we do that, we can see that the uh, host name is going to be localhost, which would be, um, let's see, we could do um, echo, is it just host name? Ubuntu, so it would just be that. And then the username is root and the password is me, me, me. So what we could do is we could switch user to root and the password is me, me, me. And we give that just a second to switch and we see that we are now root on the box. So I, I can, you know, just further confirm that uh, I am root by doing a who am I, and then we can CD over to the root directory and list the files and see that root.txt is there, cat that out, and we have completed the box. We can confirm that those are in fact the answers by looking at the root flag, which is uh, right here. And if we needed to, we could CD home WW data and cat the flag.txt and see that that is also correct. So we have root of the box. This was pretty quick. I, I you know, um, I was actually surprised with myself that I went through it pretty fast. I know the, the box is pretty old, but um, I just wanted something to do and was like, hey, I'll do this. And it was pretty fun. Uh, nonetheless, I hope that uh, shortly I can go over a very specific room I'm really, really excited about. It's called Bounty Hacker. Um, I've been working on it for a few days and I'm really hoping that uh, it gets passed so that we can go over this box together. I plan to do a video and um, I, I'm really excited for this one. It's nothing too crazy. It's, uh, it's going to be a pretty easy box and then I plan to make the next one and the ones to come after that um, just a little bit harder. But I want to kind of build a story behind it. Of course, as you can see, that is Cowboy Bebop for those who are familiar with the show. Um, it will be themed around this show and uh, the crew members and a little bit of that story. So hopefully, uh, like I said, the next time I talk about this machine, I'm actually doing a walkthrough and uh, maybe giving a little bit more insight on what's to come from it. But uh, fingers crossed, um, that is it. Uh, we have exploited the machine. There's not much else for us to do now that we have root. Uh, we can obviously go and call the startup and tell them that they need uh, to do a lot of work in order for that to not happen again. Other than that, uh, I'm going to leave you to it. I hope you have a wonderful day. I apologize for uh, the short video, but um, there are always more to come. And uh, you all have a great, wonderful rest of the week. Thank you. Bye-bye.